feel like already God's <laughs> do something there, but yeah. So be encouraged and ready. And I think, all right <laughs> thank you so much reagan we are live on facebook yay good morning yay happy monday yeah happy monday morning good morning she's velvet steel we're so excited for you guys to join us this morning um really quick before we jump in um press share on if you see on your live screen there's a little button that says share so um you do not want your girlfriends to miss out on this teaching this morning. So I'm going to do on. it now while we're talking. Yep. And then while we're doing that, if you've already pressed share, um, just drop us a little comment on where you're joining in from because we are almost to another, I believe it's a um, hundred people started following us this last week. So we have a lot of new people. Yay. Um, so I would love to know where everyone's joining us from. So just drop a little like, you're in Montana or you're in Hawaii. Don't try to rub it in too much. Um, <laughs> California. California. Yeah. Awesome. Prayers for California too. Yeah. Prayers. So while you're doing that, you're checking in, saying where you're from. Um, we obviously see your name. You don't have to retype your name there. <laughs> uh, but I would like to know a little something. Have you ever been re-gifted a gift and you knew it was re-gifted, like maybe even your own gift that you gave to somebody and they gave it back or you, your friend bought your friend something and then it came back to you. Um, I would like to hear a re-gifting story in the comments this morning and it's intentional, right? I mean, there's some re-gifting, but um, I have a little re-gifting story of my, uh, well, I won't share who, because I don't know if she's going to watch. <laughs> uh, so, person. Anyway, family, a family yeah. member um, who re-gifted something that came from another family member to me. And I'm like, oh. you're on dangerous ground, girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you know what? We kind of run deep and wide, so nobody will know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so I was given the gift that was supposed to be for somebody else. And what do you do with that? You kind of yeah. just have this awkward smile like, oh, shoot, I know your story. <laughs> I know what was behind this gift. Mm. Oh, my gosh. And I've had sometimes gifts given to me with somebody else's name on the tag. Um, that's <laughs> happened before. That was fun. <laughs> is, that like a re is that like a reusable bag that someone gave you that just had the, the name still no, on it? No, like it had a tag on the, the gift itself. Like it oh, was wow. a, it was a, there was a gift card and like nail polish and stuff in there. And the gift card had somebody else's name on it. I used it. <laughs> Totally used it. <laughs> so, I'm like, whatever. Are you going to give me something like that? I'll take it. So yeah, re-gifting. It's all, it's all fun. It's all good. I appreciate mm -hmm. any kind of gift, any kind of thought um, that somebody has. I do just think it's a little comical. Yeah. But today's topic is not about that kind of re-gifting. Mm -hmm. It's actually um, about a re-gifting that we're, we are created to do. Yeah. So I don't want to say that we're made to re-gift all your target gift cards, but um, I, I can say that there's something that Jesus intends for us to re-gift mm -hmm. on the daily. And Cece yeah. is here again this week to share about that re-gifting that forever continues to re-gift and give and have eternal impact. So ladies, get a pencil. You're going to want a pencil, get um, some paper. I don't care what it is, like the back of a receipt. If you need to your phone, I write everything in my phone, your calendar, just anything to scratch stuff on. And yeah. if you're in your car, you're in your kitchen and you're cleaning up breakfast mess, whatever, just have something to just jot something down. Cause I'm positive that God's going to give you a little nugget that he's going to want you to think on now and later. Okay. So without talking anymore, Cece, what do you have for us this morning, friends? Well, first, I want to have Jen re-gift to me her purple coffee mug that she's drinking out of. It actually <laughs> says 2017 under it. Who made that? It says SVS. Oh. Heart. That's funny. You should ask for something like that. Noted. Noted. <laughs> she just keeps drinking out of the purple. Do you ever have mug envy? I was just a little, cause it's round and it's I feel like huge. it could jump in there and snuggle. Okay. It's my whole face. Okay. Um, uh, I made it. You did. Yeah. All right. Just put me on your list. Okay. 
So guys, I told the girls this morning that I might implode because I am so excited to give this message. I brought a steak dinner today. I brought a lot of the word, which I love. I have places that um, I am okay leaving behind. I hopefully won't have to, but if I do, um, all the girls are going to be putting in the verses that I either read or reference. I was so encouraged. Um, a sweet gal that I love texted me and said that she and her mom-in-law um, watched us last week and later they read all of the verses, their homework together. So that was very motivating to me. Very Because I'm just the door opener as a teacher of the word. The Holy Spirit, his teach to you, his preach to you is it just is beautiful, profound. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we hope that we all open the door for you, but uh, dig into his word and tell us about that. That's awesome. So I'm just going to start today. We are talking about um, gifts and generosity, and we're going to look at Jesus's gift and generosity, uh, Jesus's work, the Lord's work, God's work through Paul. Um, but first, I'm just going to read some verses in Isaiah that you'll end up seeing there in comments. I want you just to hear God's heart beat in the Old Testament. We'll be in New Testament too. But I just want to start by uh, having you listen to his heartbeat. So in Isaiah 1, um, Isaiah 1 starts out strong. Verse 17, it says, learn to do good. Seek justice rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, and plead for the, wi for the widow. Learn, seek, rebuke, defend, and plead. God's heart is that the gift that he gives us, which we're going to look at in John 4 in just a few minutes, that it is the purpose behind the gift is that we receive the gift but we pour that thing out wherever we are. God never intends for you and I to meet him, to know him, to choose him, and to take ours and move on. Real time, right then, God's heart is that we would be, Paul says it, um, he says he's poured out all day long. So today you're going to hear things about water, living water, of course, but streams and rivers, because girls, we're going to read it in a second, but our goal should be a Psalm one woman and live a Psalm one life at a later date. We may get a chance to do all six verses of Psalm one. It's very dear to my heart, but today we're going to focus in on Psalm one, three in just a moment, but listen to Isaiah a little uh, later chapter, Isaiah 58, 10 to 11. If, if is important when you see if in the word, it's a big deal. Um, cause God's got a blessing on the other side of if, if you extend your soul to the hungry, listen to this and satisfy the afflicted soul. I'm going to tell you a story about satisfying the afflicted soul in just a moment. Then we have the, if here's the, then notice that, um, God is right there to give blessing when we fall in his order. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul. Did you remember I asked, I, I said that he asked us to satisfy, satisfy the afflicted soul. But here he says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. Wait for it. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. God promises us that if I uh, spend my day, my life to satisfy the afflicted soul, sometimes that's my kids. Mm. Often it's my husband. It's for sure my neighbors, my close friends, then my next sphere of influence we will be a watered garden and our waters will not fail. I'm from California. So the ocean is big to me. Um, and I think, and I used to just sit there for hours and talk to the Lord and see that far span 
and just think, my gosh, you're so majestic. And those waters are so deep, so wide and so mysterious. What the heck is even down there? I don't want to know. I saw <laughs> Jaws a bunch of times, shouldn't have scarred, marred. Lots of counseling. The point is, it's hard to boogie board. No, that's not the point. The point is that um, that water, the body, bodies of water that even God puts into his creation is a witness of the strength that we can have as a godly woman. It's good. Even on our most broken day, our most broken. Let me tell you about my most broken day this morning, last night. I'm laying in bed. So I have a, a, a little squabble with one of my sons and I'm upset with him because I feel like he's not owning his stuff and I'm having to dig for him to own his stuff. And so I call him out and then I call him out on that. And I said, I'm, I'm just looking that you, that you might own your stuff specifically. And let's just get, we're not going to bed angry, buddy. Let's just do this. And so we're all praying. And I was laying there and I felt like the Lord said, okay, did you own your stuff, your stuff specifically? And I was like, hmm, I don't think I did. And so I woke up, my son was in the shower this morning and I said, Elijah, my, I said to my son, Elijah, and I feel the door push against me, like, I'm not sure I'm ready for you this morning. <laughs> and I pushed back and I said, I have something to say specifically to you. I need to, I said a sweeping statement about you that wasn't kind and, and really wasn't true. And uh, I want to specifically seek your forgiveness. And he reached around with his head and kissed me. <laughs> and um, I needed to get my house in order, girls, before I come to be with you in the word. And my house was out of order. And so I want to be those waters that do not fail. And in that moment, God did not fail me. My sweet daughter comes in afterwards and she goes, and I had just prayed and we had kind of settled things, but it was still a little E minor chord, a little like, <laughs> um, you know, like bad violin playing in the background. And my daughter comes in and just lays hands on me. And she says this, my turn now. And she just prayed peace over my teaching today. And, and in her prayer, she said, I could even get up at six and help with the boys in her prayer. She's just talking to the Lord about helping me to be with you today. Mm -hmm. How much do I want my kids for their waters not to fail in those moments? And mm -hmm. I said, thanks for um, living in the awkward, those awkward times, little tense. Ooh. And she said, mom, and then she said my words back to me awkward is part of the deal. And we walk through it together. It is. I always say my best friend is awkward. Like, hi, CC Trawick, awkward on my left, awkward on my right. Cause I go into strange places with strange things and I do, and I, and I'm asked to do strange things and it's always awkward. So I always shake awkward's best friend and say, let's go do it again. Because that is part of loving God's people is feeling awkward. So, so become best friends and your waters <laughs> will not fail. Psalm 1-3, I'm going to read to you now. So in this Psalm, we'll talk about it later, but God's just talking about us, had just talked about us delighting in him and meditating on his word day and night. And he says, those that do that, they shall be planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he or she does shall prosper. And I'm just saying, guys, that um, us, you, the fellowship that we have here at She's in She's Velvet Steel, the fellowship that you'll have the rest of the day with your friends and your family, when you include the word in that in your day, you are going to be this girl that prospers at all that she does. You won't do it perfect. And, and God knows that. And his love covers over a multitude of sins, like my sin really against my son last night. By the way, he said, and I'm sorry too. I'm sorry too, right? So, so uh, nothing withered, nothing withered. And it was awkward and it wasn't fun. I'm just telling you that right now. This is not fun. <laughs> um, I'm trying not to move too much, just so you know, because I've taught in front of groups of women. Like one time I had my friend Jenny Petzl drag me across the stage on my back while I was kicking her. I said, Jenny, I want to illustrate how sin drags us off. And that word speaks of being hunted and dragged. And so while you're dragging me across the stage, I, is it okay if I kick you? Those are things I ask of my friends. And she was like, <laughs> okay. So I spoke that message twice. <laughs> and at the end, she's like, you know, you're a little heavier than you look. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, you know, that muscle, it weighs a lot. Okay. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> JK, but she's a tennis player and volleyball player. I go, you got it. Just like, yeah, it's good for your biceps. So a story I want to tell you today, um, as I've laid down first, the heart of God, the if, and then the, the, then the, if you fall in this order, this is, this is what you benefit from, um, is in Acts 16, and that will be listed in your comments for you. Um, there are these three stories that I want you to read later because there's no way I can cover all that text, but I'll tell you it's Acts 16, starts at 11, and just go to the end of um, Acts, which will take you to, to 40. It starts out in verse 13. That's where I'm going to start, where Paul is talking to a group of women. Love that. Students like you and I have the word. The apostle Paul sees us. She's velvet steel on the side of the road on. And he's just like, those girls look like they want to know more about Jesus. Thank you, Paul. I do. And so um, he comes across a gal uh, named Lydia and she's an entrepreneur. She is well-respected. It says that she is a worshiper of God. And so she wants more. She wants more of the word. And so um, it says in, so basically verses 13, 14, 15, um, it tells her story that she hears Paul. She comes to the Lord and um, she's baptized and says, come to my house. So fun. Um, love that story. Well, right after that though, in verse 16 is a slave girl that's young, probably teenager. She has masters. She's a slave. And she has a, a spirit of divination in her. So she has the occult working in her, upon her, around her, through her. And um, so she's a fortune teller. And um, the enemy has not all the information, but he's got some. So he's able to do some fortunes through the scout. And, and her masters are making money off her. And um, she's following Paul and she's screaming like, you know, things at him. And it, it literally says Paul, annoyed or frustrated, turns around and just cast the demon out like, enough already right and she is set free well in a moment um everyone's mad because nobody makes cash off her anymore and um so uh they're uh beaten and taken to prison so they're in prison but i want you to notice the entrepreneur woman um the seller of purple uh the godly woman that worshiped but needed more and and um came to know the lord was set free and drawn to jesus and so was the young chaotic gal that um like in our day and age would be um you know someone a young girl on drugs uh just promiscuous and um some of us on that on this team that's our story absolutely mm -hmm. our story and yet we get to teach the word so um they go to prison and they're all on lockdown and they're doing some midnight worship love that i'm usually asleep though but um, midnight worship and those chains fall off. The prison guard comes in and he notices everything opened up and he's literally going to take a sword and commit suicide. And Paul says, no, 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 we're right here. And he, this, he can, this, this prison guard cannot understand why they would stay in prison. Why would you honor, um, how you've even been treated. Why are you, why, I'm an enemy to you. I have you on lockdown, but you're still here. So he comes to know the Lord. He's a Gentile. This is all new for him. He's baptized. His whole family is baptized. The gift of God, um, the living water that he gives that allows us to be planted next to that stream comes to all of us wherever we are in our process. We can be the chaotic, screaming, Mimi, young woman or older woman. We can be the godly woman that's been in church and been a worshiper of God, but not free. We can be somebody that just walks on the scene, just doing his job, which is to be a guard, just doing his job, doesn't, doesn't know much about this gospel thing. And the Lord will touch and reach for him too. Jesus has no respecter of persons in his gift. And my first challenge to you is, can you and I be somebody that has no respecter of persons, meaning that the awkward ones, the, the ones we don't, that we don't relate to, can we, can we get a vision for them um, to know Jesus? Um, in John 4, my favorite story 
one of my favorites. I, I love favorite stories in the Bible. Okay, in John 4, um, the living water. Some of you know that story. And so Jesus is tired. He sits down. And in John 4, I'm going it, to, it starts in verse 1 actually and goes to 26. I'm going to look at John 4, 10. John 13, I'm sorry, John 4, 13 and 14. And I'm going to do one verse at the end. So what I want to say about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. So the Samaritans and the Jewish people, they had disagreements about worship and where to worship. So they had these conflicts. So the Jesus and this woman that he meets there, who is coming at a nondescript time in the day to not be seen because of her lifestyle. She's ashamed. She's a woman living ashamed ashamed all day she's just living ashamed well even when you live ashamed you still have to get water you still have to eat you still have to put a roof over your head and um for some of us that's us we're mm -hmm. living ashamed but we still have to put gas in that car we got to get some fruit and meat in that fridge and i just want to tell you that jesus is patient like we're going to see today right now he's patient to draw you to him he's patient for you to bicker with him about even what he has for you because she bickers she gets she distracts him she's like yeah well do you think you're greater than jacob and you don't even have anything to put your water in and and he just keeps plugging away mm -hmm. like he did for you and for i like he's doing for you and i jesus did that for me last night with my son right he brought me his living water in this context living water is salvation because he says eternal, the water is eternal. So we know the context is salvation. But what I'm saying in what we read in Isaiah and Psalm 1 is that water is the abundant life that keeps on going. If we keep on going, meditating in the word and getting together with gals and, and admitting when we're out of line, when we're sinning, oh, walking in that awkward again and again. So the woman, I'm going to read these couple of verses that, um, that we can in our time today. Um, in John um, 4.10, um, he has just asked her for a drink. That's what's just happened. And um, he says, if you knew the gift of God, we're speaking about gifting and generosity of God. This is the ultimate gift. We're about to read the ultimate gift. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Do you notice that Jesus requires us to ask? Mm. When I looked at all the healings in the New Testament, there was um, there were times like when he was um, like in Luke six, I believe it says, and everybody was healed that day. So there were times when obviously people couldn't be interviewed um, all around to say, to require something, but they were there, weren't they? They mm -hmm. were, they were physically there. They were seeking him. So there mm -hmm. was an ask, but like the mud on the eyes and just, you can just think, reach with that hand that doesn't work, pick up that mat. You can just think of all those times that Jesus asked a question and then gives maybe a warning. Like, so when we leave here, how about go and sin no more. Right? So Jesus as we should for ourselves and for those that we love, right? Um, he requires something. And I love that in what I just read to you, he's saying, if, if you had known, then, then you would have asked. Mm -hmm. Well, she asks, she ends up asking like, okay, I hear you, I'm gonna ask. And so she steps up and you and I need to step up and ask for what we need, you know? Um, so John 4, 13 to 14, um, you know, Jesus answers her. And before I read this, there's something I want you to think about in, in the answer, he's going to talk about eternal salvation, but I, I want you to notice why. So just listen for the why. Okay. So Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. So the well that was right there, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him or her will never thirst. Side note, she had been thirsting for the wrong water. He tells her that she's had five husbands and she's with man number six and she's parched. He's pointing out, you're parched. Mm -hmm. He's pointing out to me, Cece, you're <clears throat> parched when you search after anything that's not the living water. 
but he says the water that I shall give him or her will become in him or her a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. And um, when Jamie asked me to teach on this topic, that verse right there, that you and I would be um, a woman that, yeah, we, we have eternal salvation with Jesus because um, we have crossed the line. And some of you watching, you haven't decided yet. And um, just so you know, that's a prayer way for you, whether we do it here together. But that's just a prayer. That's just a simple prayer that says, Jesus, I'd like to have this living water. I'd like to have the eternal life that these gals I'm watching that I just happened to click on to are talking about. And um, sometimes I challenge people, they say, well, I don't understand God and he's never showed himself to me and he let me down. And so I always say the same thing. Well, would you be comfortable with me just asking him and better, would you be comfortable and me joining you as you ask him to show himself yeah. to you? Right. Cause I cannot have all your answers, but is that okay? If he has not shown up, could we just ask him to show up? And could you actually ask him? Cause I have no, <laughs> I have no problem knowing that he will show up, right? He will show up. Right. And so that everlasting life is a spring up. It springs up inside of us and it's to be poured out to everyone around us. It is, it is the re-gift girls. It is the best re-gift and, um, and we're not to take ours and just keep it. And, um, I'm just going to end with this and then um, pass it to the girls that, so uh, in 2010, one of my closest friends, Tracy, I asked her if I could share this. She uh, was feeling very ill. She ended up driving herself to the ER because she felt the Lord impressed her to do so. She went in there and basically they found out that there was cancer wrapped around all of her innards, just, just all over. The surgeon that opened her up um, said, uh, it's good that I've done this one other time. And uh, Tracy is cancer-free. It's going to make me cry because I love her. Your story may be that um, that loved one passed away, by the way. And mm -hmm. I always stop to take um, responsibility as a teacher to say, I'm glad they were made whole in Jesus. And I've let people go. My mom and my dad and my brother are, are all, they've gone before me onto Jesus. So I know what that feels like too. And I just bless you in it. And I'm glad you're going to um, get to see them again. Um, but let me just tell you this. So I, I begged my friend, Tracy, I, I, I pushed a little hard, actually. I said, Trace, the Lord has the first couple verses in Mark one for me to bring up to your house in the Heights. Can I pray it over you before? And she was literally leaving for her surgery and had told both of her girls that I love you because they weren't sure if she would make it out. That's a big day. And I, and I felt like I'm intruding, but the Lord said, go. And I read the verses over her about um, a voice of one calling in the desert, in the wilderness, about John the Baptist, how he um, is the forerunner of Jesus. And the Lord said, I want, you to, I want you to read these over, Tracy, because I want you to lay the word and I want you to be the forerunner. I want you to provide a place for me to land into Tracy's situation. So I prayed it over Trace and I loved her and she, she went off to have her surgery. We got to keep her. <laughs> Happy about that, Jasar. And um, Jamie Beeson asked me to pray over a woman um, maybe eight or nine days ago. And she had a very similar story. Jamie and I have never met her. She's a friend of a friend of Jamie's. And so I'm listening to her story and I tell her the story of my friend Tracy that happened in that same hospital and um, that she's doing well. Uh, my friend Tracy, she said, I can tell you, she had a full hysterectomy and lots of stuff, uh, stuff left her that day. And um, it all worked out. So I say to this gal that I've never met, can I, can I read those, those verses over you? Um, is that okay? Because what I can bring in my prayer is nothing compared to what the word and prayer will bring. Mm -hmm. And so I got to read those verses over her and kissed her on the cheek can I give you a kiss on the cheek? I got to re-gift. And God will ask you to give money. He'll ask you to give time. He'll ask you to give up a dream and sometimes to give the dream to somebody else. Mm. It's rough. 
But those times are the richest, most refreshing times. I said to Jamie, let's go tomorrow because we're going to go in a couple of days. Do you want to go sooner? And she's like, yeah, I want to go sooner. And um, this little gal that I just met, she said to me, lots of people are praying. And I asked her, I said, do you know Jesus? And she said, I do. I said, awesome. You're solid. And uh, there's hope for you. Lots of hope for you. And um, I said to her, she said, a lot of people are praying. We're strangers to her. Keep this in mind. But we're really not. Never met a stranger yet. And she said, but there is nothing like being prayed for like this. And I got to re-gift for all those people that prayed for me when I was so far from Jesus. So very far. So re-gift his love, guys. Re-gift his love. Please look into those verses and let the Holy Spirit be a much better teacher than me. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, Stacey. <laughs> um. I'm kind of speechless. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the trials are such a gift mm -hmm. he gives us, you know, yeah. when you look back on um, what he allowed you to go through and his faithfulness and meeting you right there and you putting yourself as the woman at the well, you putting yourself as, you know, all these different characters that he has given us. Mm -hmm you wouldn't be able to do that if you hadn't walked through those things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just start out with what stood out to me. Um, and it, it goes back to that grace. And we talked about it last week of, um, you know, when you said last week, it's indulgent for you to mm. not extend grace to everyone. Mm on those same lines, this stuck out to me too. And maybe it's just because I'm served. I'm like, my radar is up on this topic, mm -hmm. but it's that he is no respecter of persons with his gift, you know, whether it's the woman that either thinks she has all her stuff together and on the outside is doing good. She's been going to church for years, or mm -hmm. it's the girl that's on the corner that's addicted to drugs and, um, has wasted so many opportunities that have been given to her. Yeah. Um, it's equal playing field in his, in his heart. Right. And it is equal. desire to give his gift. And for us to emulate that, we talk about it, but to hear you lay it out the way you did this morning, that's a, that's a big call. Mm -hmm. Jen, um, in California, one time up a street called Harbor Boulevard, there was this beautiful blonde woman, maybe 21, and just in cute summer shorts and a regular t-shirt. And the Lord spoke to my heart what she was up to. And I saw a couple men. I mean, this is two o'clock in the afternoon, like right. Target, Target right there, Olive Garden right there, Marie Callender's, right? And so, and I whooped around and I'm praying, I'm praying, Jesus, don't let her get into a car with one of those men. Right. And I whoop around and I say, Hey, can I talk to you? I chase her. Look at me on Harbor Boulevard chasing <laughs> beach Boulevard. Sorry. Um, um, Reagan, you live there. It was beach. Yeah, Boulevard. So I was it's, I know where beach is. Yeah. I know yeah, where you're it's at beach now. Boulevard right there where Marie calendars is. I used to work at that Marie calendars. So anyway, okay. um, so, um, I chase her and I tell her about Jesus and she looks at me and I go, I, I know what you're up to. And she looks down and she says to me, how did you know? Cause there's nothing. And I said, that's Jesus that, you know, he loves you so much that I had no peace until I came to tell you about him. Mm -hmm. And I gave her my number, right. no respecter of persons. Yeah. And you know, CC, one thing that's been just going through my head, like the more you're talking of, you know, being parched and mm -hmm. feeling ashamed and just stuff we've struggled with and just thinking like, that God is no respecter of persons. And I mm -hmm. think sometimes when you're sitting there, if you're watching this and you're listening to it after the fact, you're feeling dry and, you know, maybe you haven't had six husbands. You might have, if you're from California, <laughs> you know, I don't know. We love it down here. Okay. But um, just realizing, you know, it might not be the six husbands, but maybe it's the same sin over and over, like mm -hmm. yelling at our kids, like mm -hmm. just, you know, not honoring our husbands in the way that we know that we should. Because when you know you should do something and you don't do it, 
that could be sin right there. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just, it's a basic thing, but just that God is wanting to take that and just not only like remove it, but just fill us with something that we're just like, we don't even struggle with it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you take the woman of the well and I think, wow, she's obviously wanting to be loved. Like you don't keep marrying guys, you know, mm-hmm. because so you, so you want to be loved. And and when she left there, she was so loved that she wanted to share it with everybody else. And I just, I had told these guys earlier today, ladies watching that I just felt like God really was just going to speak through CC specifically to somebody that's watching us online. And I mean, I'm already feeling myself like getting a word from there, but I just know that this is, if you're sitting there and it's like kind of giving that, like, sometimes you even sweat a little bit, your heart beats a little faster and you're just like, oh my gosh, well, it wasn't six husbands, whatever it is. Like, that's just one story from the Bible, but it can go however the Holy Spirit uses it to speak to you. And I'm just challenged that we don't just try to make it through, put the smile on, especially right now, holiday season is like mommy go time. And we just stop and say like, okay, God, you know, I did this with someone the other day and I, I did it while I was myself, somebody, myself. I sent the car, I sat in the car and I said, you know, Jesus, just draw close to me. And then I asked him, I was like, what lie am I believing God? Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I'm driving, it's not even seconds to hear him say that you can do it all because you can't do anything. It's me. And I'm just looking for an empty vessel. So if you're sitting there and you're just struggling because you're trying to do it all, I feel like that's where God's saying, I'm going to give you that living water that's going to flow out. You just got to come be open, wanting something. She came thirsty for one thing, but obviously already in her heart, she was thirsty for something else. So mm-hmm. I just feel like, you know, I can't, mm-hmm. I, you know, yeah. Um, so Reagan, my, my daughter this week, we took two big jars and she's a photographer and we poured water in the jars while she took, um, pictures. And it was exactly what you're talking about that. Mm. And she's like, let's turn the water blue. And she just poured them and she wrote on the jar in her sweet calligraphy, um, whatever she does prosperous mm. and just what you're talking right now. And, That's right. um, yeah. And uh, that was so visual for us. So thanks for reminding me about that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been awesome. It's not very often that I don't have a lot to say. I shared with CC and my husband this morning that I will wake up sometimes. <laughs> my husband <laughs> likes to quote me and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have so much to say. and so little time to say it in. <laughs> okay. So I'm not few on my words, but um. I I do feel like, huh, I don't know if I can add anything, (laughs) but I think maybe to wrap this up and if I can, um, tie it with a bow since we're talking about gifting. Yeah. Um, I think something that, that if it didn't stand out to you that I want to draw our attention to, and I say that because this is not a one-time ask that we come to Jesus with, that it's, that it's a, a daily ask. And, and the analogy of thirst is not your thirsty one time mm-hmm. in the physical body, our body hunger signals and thirst signals are daily. Um, and they're set up and designed so that they actually, you would become thirsty before you're dehydrated. Mm-hmm. That's the way that that works with dehydration. So if you're thirsty, you're, you need to drink that before your body goes into shutdown mode, right? Right, You need, it's it's a warning signal. Mm -hmm. So when we find our souls thirsting, parched, whatever word we want to use to, to Mm -hmm. describe that it's a warning signal that sent up, that set up in our spirit that is requiring us to ask for that living water. And that the only way that we can re-gift is if we receive it, we have to have something to give. And so how can we go into our day expecting to give to the afflicted or to give to the ones that are um, hurting or the, or go into awkward moments? How can we have the strength and the pr- proper perspective Good. Not, so that it's not on ourselves? Because who wants to be awkward? Nobody wants to be awkward. But you, when you receive something, it's not, it doesn't matter to you anymore. Right. Um, it only matters when you're like, I got nothing. I don't, I can't spare some awkward. You know what I'm saying? Like I got nothing to, to give right now. And so awkward is not happening, but when you've been given and you've received and it's flowing like that water, um, then you can't help, but then regift. And so I love the challenge is twofold here for us today is to, to notice the thirst and ask right away. 
and then look immediately with an expectation that there's somebody to regift it to. Whatever he gave you in that ask and in that moment that there's somebody to regift it to, whether it's your children and it starts in your own home, I'm guessing a majority of the time that's where it begins yeah. is right in your own home. Yeah. Um, but I also believe too, that as we walk out of our home, it could be the stranger at the hospital. Mm. It could be the lady in line at, at Albertsons or your grocery store. It could be your child's teacher. It could be your boss. It could be your employee. Um, that there's somebody that needs to be, they need to be told of like CC did with the girl on, on beach Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They need to be told that God loves them and Jesus pursues them and he wants to quench their thirst too. Mm -hmm. So CC, thank you for bringing that. Uh, all of those verses that she hit on today are typed in there for us to go back and revisit this week and just let God take that. Um, thirst that was touched on today and continue to pour into us. So I'm, I'm excited to hear and to see not just for myself, but um, for you girls uh, where he's regifting this week. Uh, yeah. And that's our focus of the week is uh, giving. And this time of year, we're open to more giving and we do a lot of spending to give, um, but maybe there's a spending of time or a spending of another way um, in order to re-gift that we can bring our attention to this week. So I'm excited to hear how that goes and to be in community with you this week to encourage, encourage each other in that. So Cece, thank you for sharing and encouraging us and spurring us on. Um, I love it. Love it so much. Reagan, Jen, your comments were really good. I just feel like I need to sit here in silence for a while. <laughs> so, so next week, um, we're going to look at that gift, uh, another way, just so you know, and if you want to read ahead, just start by digging into Psalm 51, a Psalm known by many. Um, and I'm going to add a verse that is, um, hard to teach uh, because you're, you might not like me as much afterwards. But um, no it's, <laughs> it's, about, it's about like wives respect your husbands. Come on now. Not, no, no, I, I'm not. No, they haven't known no me. Way. Listen, listen, it's they haven't known me not, like long enough to start doing like submission verses. No, those will come at some point, but not yet. Not yet. Let's be friends for a while first, but really I about. Yeah. Right. I can just mute her when that starts to happen. <laughs> You don't spoiler. feel spiritually strong enough yet, CC. So. Spoiler, spoiler. But um, yeah, so start digging in and then just pray for me that um, you like me after. <laughs> We're okay with awkward. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, girls. I love y'all. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.